Well, hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting episode here on the MI Gardener channel. It has been an amazing month and let me tell you what, there is something about the fulfillment of growing something indoors when there are four inches of snow outside, negative five degrees outside, and just absolutely no way you could ever grow something. And I'm telling you what, it has been more than a journey. It has been super successful. And I wanna bring that success to you because it is harvest day. I have been posting the journey on the Instagram and on Facebook, as well as bringing you along for the updates. So if you are new to this whole journey, make sure to check out the other episodes. I've also made a playlist called Hydroponics. It's got all our hydroponic videos, including some how-tos, some tutorials, all that good stuff, but I wanna do a final video for the lettuce. We're gonna be starting something new, something exciting, and I'm very, very excited about it. So the first thing that you're also going to wanna to know is that I have documented pictures every week, and it has been awesome to see. So I'm going to see if I can get those pictures, and if I can, we're gonna play them now. All right, so wow, unbelievable growth, right? I can't even believe it, four weeks, from seed to harvest in four weeks, it's like mind boggling, it's so exciting and it's very cool to see and to experience. So it really pushed the limits, I got to learn a ton and that was the whole purpose of this, was to see how much I could grow in a span of a month, to see how profitable it really would be. So we're going to test that theory of profitability with our setup. I am not facing the setup because I want it to be a surprise, obviously. So what you saw was three weeks. Now let's check out the fourth week, then we'll harvest and we'll check out how profitable our setup was because for anyone joining us, uh, we are on a mission to try to find the most profitable hydroponic system out there for the cheapest amount of money because everyone always says that hydroponics indoors is not sustainable, it's not financially uh, sustainable because it's never going to be profitable, but we're on a mission to prove that theory wrong and uh, might not be immediate, but maybe in a long time investment type situation, we might be able to find something. So it might even be this, you never know. So let's check it out. And uh, I think you guys are really going to be surprised with what's going on. So what you are seeing is after four weeks, unbelievable. Like I literally have no words to describe how amazing this is. Four weeks and we have lettuce growing unbelievably fast. We have uh, our, our arugula, which is just outgrowing any expectation that I had. And sure, some of this stuff could continue growing. However, what I wanna do is I wanna harvest this stuff so we can get a final weigh in for the month because that's the whole purpose is getting a month weigh in. So we're going to harvest what we have. Everything's going to get harvested. Even if it could grow a little bit more, theoretically in a system like this, you could let it grow a little bit more, but we wanted to test the profitability in a one month span. And that's why we have to harvest today because it's been exactly one month and, uh, and we're going to test that. So theoretically the arugula could continue growing some more and the mustard can continue growing some more. We are seeing just a teeny tiny little bit of yellow leaves on the back there. That is as expected because this system here is never replenished with nutrients. Whatever nutrients were in there originally are what they've been growing on for this entire month. All right, let's check out these roots. Look at them babies. I'll tell you what, that is pretty impressive. And I am so pleased. I mean, they just really go back there and they are entangled, that's for sure. So, man, impressive, very impressive. So the first thing we're gonna harvest here is our oak leaf lettuce. This is the, some of the smallest of the oak leaf lettuce. But I'll tell you what, impressive nonetheless. I'm going to pull all this stuff out here. They've, these ones have kind of grown inside the uh, inside of the net cups a little bit, which might have been the reason for their inhibited growth. Um, I'm gonna do this for these ones here because they are uh, <laughs> they are really really healthy. So check that out. I just cut off the roots off the bottom there, and pretty amazing. This was the smallest one, like I had said. There's, well, there's two small ones there, but um, 
very amazing. And I get this. All right, there is that one there. And the, the rock wool will just throw out. I've had a lot of people asking me if you can reuse the rock wool. And to be honest, you really can't. Um, this would not be wise. So, um, however, I will say though, I will mention that the, uh, the net cups can be used. So make sure you don't throw those out. That's, that's something you want to keep around. This is, this is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. Check out that root growth right there. It's a pretty good butter crunch bib lettuce. If I don't say so myself for 30 days, it's pretty awesome. And uh, definitely smells very green. Check that out. <laughs> awesome. And how about this one? Not so bad if I don't say so myself. So the bed's finished. And I'm telling you what, I am very, very impressed. So here's what we're gonna do. We are going to separate out each component that we grew, the mustards, the lettuce, the kale, and the uh, arugula. We're gonna weigh them out, and then we're going to tally them up by the market price in the store. And uh, we had to get a bigger bucket here. Check that out. There you go. That is, <laughs> here's the kicker. Only one of the buckets. We only had room for, uh, well, we had to get more. So there is some more of the mustards. Ah, light. <laughs> there is some, there we go. There you go. There is the mustards and some arugula and some more arugula in there as well. Let's do the mustard first here. I'll put that on. We're gonna, all right. There we go, clear the scale. All right, so let's see what we got here. So this is, uh, oh, that's in grams here. Let's change that to ounces. So that is 12.1 ounces. So next we're going to do the mustards. I had a Mizuna Red Streaks mustard. And I also had a Southern Giant Red mustard here. So I'm gonna clump them both together because they're both in the mustard category and typically just the mustards sell for a set rate. So I'm going to put this on here and see what we got there. Looks like it's going to be 10, uh, 10 ounces flat. And the next is the lettuce. Got a lot of beautiful lettuce in there. Just the uh, the bib lettuce and the um, the oak leaf lettuce did really really well. So that is one pound, five point four ounces of lettuce. And last but not least is the kale. Got some beautiful kale here. And let's check out what we got on the scale, that is 6.9 ounces. So as you can see here, we have the breakdown. You had uh, 0.76, I convert them all to pounds. So you had 0.76 pounds of arugula, 0.63 pounds of mustard, 1.34 pounds of lettuce, and 0.43, uh, 0.431 pounds of kale. Now I obviously, I researched our local prices. so. Your prices will totally vary, but I found the prices per pound of arugula, uh, mustard, lettuce, and kale. Multiply that by the weight. You can see the totals on the right here. These are the totals of what we grew. And surprisingly, we actually grew the least, uh, uh, the value of kale was surprising. So we, uh, we grew the least value in kale, actually, beat it, uh, actually lost by the lettuce, which is surprising. But as you can see, we tabulated in the cost for the lights. Um, I didn't uh, calculate the other lights because those are on a different bed. So the cost of the two light or the two um, light fixtures to run that one was fifteen dollars and twenty four cents. I simply found that out by the wattages they used and multiplied that by our cost of electricity uh, per kilowatt hour. You know, long complicated. Uh, conversions, but I did that for you so you can see it. And um, obviously not going to show how I did it because it took a while. 
but basically that's what I did. I found the wattage that we used for that bed. I also calculated in the, uh, you know, just the wattage per hour and uh, how much that costed us. And basically we lost $4.94 on the setup. So this over time would actually continue to be less profitable than buying it from the store. However, you know, this is one setup. So we are going to continue testing stuff. Obviously, let's, let's say we grew only arugula. That might be something we want to try because the arugula, you know, we grew, uh, let's see here, $3.80 of arugula and at $5 a pound, uh, you know, man, that's a pretty good turnaround. And so if we didn't have these other weak, uh, you know, these other weaklings here that were bringing us down, we might have actually been able to pull a profit had we grown only arugula. So we might look into that as well. Another thing is, is herbs. We're definitely gonna try that with our beds. We got our basil, that's very expensive in the store. And so we're also going to try growing cucumbers, which are very expensive in the store. So we're going to see what we can do. But as of now, that is the results for the one month profitability test on the lettuce and the, well, the, the mixed greens bed. So hopefully that helps you out in some way, shape or form to get a feeling for the cost effectiveness of growing uh, greens under lights indoors. So you're probably wondering, what are you gonna do with all these greens? Because we probably won't eat them all. I certainly can only juice so many greens and I don't want them to go to waste. So what we're going to be doing is sure, we're gonna eat quite a few, but the vast majority of these greens you see here are actually going to be donated to our local soup kitchen. Now, if you've ever been homeless, I, I sympathize. I really, my heart absolutely goes out to you if you've ever been homeless. And I don't wish it on anybody. And especially in Michigan, it's freezing. It's like zero degrees. It's, it's absolutely frigidly cold. And to be homeless or to not have enough money for food, uh, for warmth and for survival in this type of weather, it, I, I can't even imagine. I, I honestly cannot imagine and I'm so blessed with so much abundant food. And I want to give back in some way, shape or form because these soup kitchens, it's, they rely on donations and local farmers, thank goodness, when we were there in the summertime, we're donating food as well. And that's so awesome to see. But let's face it, I don't know many people that are growing food right now. And I guarantee you that if I went there, what we'd see is canned goods. And obviously beggars can't be choosers you know, no pun intended, but beggars really can't be choosers. When you're talking about having nothing, anything is better than nothing, but canned goods are very overprocessed and don't contain many nutrients. And so let me tell you what, when you taste some fresh, locally grown, right outside your door vegetables, nothing is fresher, nothing is more nutrient dense. And so we're going to deliver this today to feed the people that need it the most, that could really use a pick me up, that are most likely in not the healthiest condition because their bodies are fighting everyday battles that people that have houses, you and I, we don't ever, I mean, we might get the seasonal flu, but we're not out in the cold fighting a cold almost every single day. And so it, my heart absolutely just, it, it, it absolutely just, I, I can't even describe. I've seen when I go there, the look on people's faces is just, it's just utter desperation. And if there's anything that I can do to better that situation for them, I will absolutely do that. And I might have lost $5 on this system, but the, the value that I get to give back to someone who needs it most is, uh, it's priceless. I couldn't even put a price tag on this. So I'm going to uh, get these in the car, head out to the soup kitchen, donate them, and then uh, we'll get the other system up and running in a few days as soon as the seeds sprout. So I'll catch you then for, a, uh, for an update for probably Monday or maybe Friday. Uh, don't quite know what day that I'll have the video up, but I'll have a surprise for you all for our next plans on finding a profitable hydroponic indoor setup. So I hope you all enjoyed. And as always, this is Luke from Emma Gardener, hoping you all are growing big or going home. Hopefully you're staying warm wherever you are, and I'll talk to you all later. See ya. Bye.